What's up everyone? So I'm here with my boy Rashad and he's actually an ESTP and we're continuing the interview videos that I've been doing the interview series on my channel where I interview one person of each personality type to further explain that personality type and you know help the person you know like give you like a model of an actual person of that type to relate to. Rashad is actually one of my classmates here at Liberty. Um, we're both studying communications. Um, he's hilarious, which <laughs> you'll see effortlessly <laughs> throughout. And it's, it's just because of how blunt he is, which is pretty much an ironic thing about ESTP now, isn't it? Uh, I'm a senior at Liberty. I've been here for four straight years, four long years, but four straight years. Um, I'm getting ready to graduate in May, but I'm actually coming back again for my master's. I'm not really keen on all this stuff, but he told me to be here for the video, so here I am. <laughs> Just a normal college student. Um, I could have did a lot of like other little things, but I chose not to, to work on master's and get a real good education, and it's been working out for me. So I decided to kind of work that uh, with my degree instead of trying to take on like uh, sports and stuff like that, like I did way back in high school. Uh, but it's been it's been a good time. Uh, but you know what? It's it's April, so I'm getting ready for it to be over. Nice, nice. What exactly are you like aiming for ideally to be in the future? Right now, I'm looking for. I'm just kind of hoping to get my master's and get it get that going. That's a two-year program, which gives me kind of a couple years to figure out my life instead of me trying to uh, not know what I'm going to do right after May. Sure. Um, but right now, my goal is to work uh, for a church in some kind of way. Um, I am currently working as a youth pastor coming up starting in May nice. for a church in Canada, which is actually where I'm from. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, <laughs> nice. But I'll be working as a youth pastor there. I'm building and writing curriculums for them uh, just to get their program off the hip. They don't really have a youth program there. So it's um, an opportunity for me to build a program, build, an uh, build a whole curriculum for them, and uh, that way I can kind of push them in the right direction to start their youth program. Right now they told me that they had two youth um, I'm hoping by the end of the summer to have 26. Oh, nice. Um, nice that's uh, kind of what my goal is. Mm. Um, and I have, I've been doing it for a few years now, so I'm able to uh, write programs. And I know what kids want because I'm like a seven-year-old kid most of the time <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that's what's up, man. No, really, a lot of respect to you for that. So like I said earlier, Rashad is an ESTP. And for right now, we're just going to go through a list of some well-known ESTPs, which are Shaolin Fantastic... Sonic the Hedgehog, Riley Freeman, Chad from High School Musical, Gerald from Hey Arnold, Malcolm X, Thomas Edison, Bull from the show Bull, Jesse from Full House, Raven Simone, Alex from X-Men, Kovu from The Lion King 2, Drake Bell, Alexander the Great, Winston Churchill, Alfred Hitchcock, Buzz Lightyear, George Patton, Greer from She's Gotta Have It, Aquaman, Thor, Amber Rose, Douglas MacArthur, Epicurus, James Randi, Harry Houdini, Ernest Hemingway, Dale Carnegie, Penny Proud, The Rock, e. <laughs> Donald Trump, All Might from My Hero Academia, Justin Timberlake, it's a curveball right there, Max from Goofy Movie, Angelina Jolie, Scott from X-Men, The Boss Baby, and Alex Whitlock from Out of Time. So as you can see, there's a lot of ESTPs out there. And this is a very good thing, to be honest, because the archetype that we've given the ESTP is the conqueror. Um, and this is due to them always wanting to go into action. And this is due to their first function, which we're definitely going to be talking a lot more about um, throughout this video. So a lot of people know about the dichotomies 
um, where it's like E versus I, S versus N, T versus F, and then J versus P. But there's a whole other world behind the dichotomies. And I would say like the dichotomies would make up like 20% of what you may actually be able to know about your personality type. But when you look at the mental processes, or what we call the functions, then now you really understand like why people do what they do, how they process the world, and how they make their decisions. Um, and every personality type uses four primary cognitive functions. For the ESTP, their four cognitive functions in order is extroverted sensing, also known as SE, introverted thinking, also known as TI, extroverted feeling, also known as FE, and then introverted intuition, also known as NI. And ironically speaking, I's an ENFJ, I use the same functions as well. So me and Rashad actually have the same mental processes, only in like a different order. So we might have actually a lot of similarities and then we might even be able to pin out like some differences in how we make our decisions throughout this video. But without further ado, we're gonna hop into the first function, which is SE. Concerned with what is on an empirical level and being completely in the present moment. This function allows the individual to take things at face value and act quickly on one's feet. SE also permits the individual to become completely in tune with their body, aware of their surroundings, and have an overall heightened level of the, high, of the five senses. Can seem shallow, flashy, and sometimes appear to have ADHD. <laughs> well. And so, I made a joke like that for all of the types, uh, all of the functions. Just That's so all right. You know. That's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> There's so many different faces to every function. And um, for the ESTP, where you see SE shine the most, most of the time, is how straightforward they can be in their speech. Um, they see things for what it is. Like, there's a joke um, for all of the 16 personalities, like what would each personality type do with if there was like an apple on the floor or something like that. And I actually don't remember like what all of them said. Um, I'll find it and I'll be just probably gonna be showing in the video right about now. But pretty much the ESTP was the last one. And it said the ESTP would just pick up the effing apple and wonder what the heck everybody else is doing. Because <laughs> why are you staring at the apple? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And all, it said things like the ENTJ would like take it and take over the world and the ISFJ will like, you know, do, do like a whole bunch of like other things. But yeah, that's pretty much how the ESTP looks at things. And you can even see this with like Donald Trump, how he just sees things like, oh, this is so obvious. Like this is just what it is. Like you guys are reading too deep into it. So you have a superpower of literally being able to see things at face value for what it is. Um, while a lot of people may leap over the original solution. Um, then SE can also be seen in um, the ESTP style, oftentimes, them being very athletic, and they catch everything. Like, they, there's also jokes where like people can't really like scratch a private part or something <laughs> without the ESTP noticing. Um, and they like to do like very like high adrenaline stuff. They like to just jump in action. SE is a very action-oriented type of thing. Last week, actually, we were um, doing a project together where, like, I was once again interviewing you. <laughs> yeah, seems to be a thing that's going on around here. Right, and he stated that he's probably the most impatient person in the entire world, like, verbatim. And I thought that was hilarious, and I said, wow, we're definitely going to rephrase that. Or not rephrase that, we're going to definitely repeat that in the video. But... Yeah, essentially that's the gist of what SE is, and Rashad, we're going to open the door for you to talk about that. Like, how do you relate to it? Yeah, um, that's definitely, when I look at it like that, and when you, the way you described it, it's 100% like exactly who I am. <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not about overthinking, and not, I'm not about like not being able to figure out what's going on. I'm all about like, let's just do it, get it done, figure it out. And I think it's hilarious that you mentioned The Rock because The Rock is actually my idol. Uh, I and the Red Ranger. And the Red Ranger, but we'll get Who to also that. also is the STP? Well, the Red Ranger is my all-time favorite. Well, I want to be the Red Ranger, and uh, I still think that some days I'm going to be. You pretty much will be. If I think If you already think like the Red Ranger, then you are the Red Ranger. And you know what? That is the most kind thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> because that is my dream, no question asked. If you ask anybody what my dream is, and they know me at all, they're probably going to be like, he wants to be the Red Ranger. My screensaver <laughs> on my phone 
I'm a 21 year old man, and <laughs> my screensaver on my phone is a Red Power Ranger. So, really, dream Red Power Ranger. Now, I'm not, like I said earlier, I'm not really big on the, I don't really know what everything is, but like the way you described it, just it completely sounds like me. Mm-hmm. I'm a more of a take action kind of person. I live 100%. In the present, I'm scared of the future almost um, because I <laughs> don't want to go anywhere. I like what my <laughs> life is right now. Like I don't like it. I don't want it to go faster. I don't want it to go slower. I just I love it. Like I'm just enjoying myself, playing sports, hanging out, trying to do schoolwork. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what I don't. I, you know, school is it's here and it's working. And if it has to be done, it'll be done. But. Like, living in the present was my biggest thing that I got from that definition that Denzel gave. Just because that is, like, so me. I love to... I don't care about the future, what the consequences are going to be. I don't think about the consequences. I don't worry about the consequences until, like, like until the consequences are coming. And then I'm like, ah, oh, dang, now i got to worry about the consequences. And, but it just seems to, like, work out that way. But I'm more of, definitely more of a, a present person. I'm there for you, but... And I don't worry about what's going to happen in 20 minutes. I don't worry about what's going to happen in two days. I really do worry about what's, like, presently going on. Mm. And that's good in a lot of ways. But it also bites me in the butt a lot of times, too. (laughs) Because I don't worry about homework that's due in a week. And then I have to stay up all night and write a 10-page paper. Which is not a big deal because I do it all the time. But uh, (laughs) but, uh, it is, that is, there's pros and cons to living in the present. Um, and you, I meet people all the time that are like so worried about the future, and that's just so not me. So I don't get it. <laughs> um, what? I'm just saying. I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, I know. I, don't, I love your honesty. <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, they're just they want it. They just like, oh, I got this paper due in three and a half months. I'm like, worry about it in three and a half months. Like, calm down. Like, what's wrong with you? It happens all the time. People get mad at me, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. The other thing that really cracked me up about your like thing that you said on the bottom is saying mm. that I was like super shallow, because <laughs> I get that a lot, and maybe because I am. It, that's a very good possibility that I could be shallow. Um, that's not a big deal. Like I don't care. <laughs> but it's, what? People call me shallow all the time. <laughs> so, you just think this is hilarious. I don't get it. I don't understand. Uh, but that like you know that shallow flashy thing. Yes. I do like to be flashy as well, especially if I make a good catch in football mm. or, you know, anything that I can show off a little bit. I use that to my advantage just a tad. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. And you're really smooth, too. So that's that's another yeah. thing you do like, I'm not, I don't know what smooth. I can smooth. talk my way out of anything. Yeah, that, I think that's pretty um, smooth. But <laughs> smooth. I can talk my way out of everything, too. Dude, so Smooth. I mean, <clears throat> charming, maybe. I, give my, I have a good smile. Um, Ooh, I, let's show them real quick. What is it? See, <laughs> uh, actually, that's a lie. That's a lie. Hold on, time out. That was actually I don't use a smile because that as you saw that was just like the most frightening thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but it's the gopi smolder. All right. Mm. So it's like just a little little eyebrow raise and a little just like a little bit like you know just like that. And then a little wink sometimes for a girl. Oh man, they love it. They love it. <laughs> the confidence that you bring is like ridiculous. The teacher had asked. Um, the ladies in the class to mention something that guys should know for like the first <laughs> date <laughs> and then another ENFJ in the class named Hannah she was like guys should learn to just be themselves and not be so overconfident and Rashad goes to say raises his hand he's like well what if being overconfident is just how we are <laughs> something along the lines of like personality and then on top of that it reminds me of like how like you were telling us about um, a girl that you had like been talking to and everything, who ironically is in the NFJ as well. And um, she was like, you said that she was like the first girl to pretty much like reject you, and no. you weren't even like used to that. Like, no. did she just say no? <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. A little bit about that. Yeah, okay, I can tell you about that. That's not a big deal. Well, I, she walked in my our classroom like the very first day from when I was a soul junior, and I like kind of had a crush on her because of the whole shallow thing that we talked about earlier. And um, <laughs> she, uh, so she walked in, and I was like, not scared, but scared for the first time in my life uh, because she was really, really attractive, and I wanted, I wanted her to be mine. Uh, so I, for the first time in my life, worked my butt off 
for this girl like worked and I'm telling you I've never worked that hard in my entire life and I don't know if I ever will again that's good but that's I, good. I did I worked good extremely job, I worked <laughs> extremely hard for her um, but it came around like March and we were talking all the time and whatever March, April, May came along and I had asked her out because I was like okay it's about time I just need to do this and she tells me no well she didn't tell me no she told me like yes no like, I like you, but we're not going to date. And I was like, girl, what are you, do- what are you talking about? <laughs> like, why would you do that to me? You can't do that. Um, I'm Rashad. Let's be real for just a second. <laughs> Hold on. Time out. You know who you're saying no to, right? Like, that was kind of what my response was. Um, and I probably said something like that to her just because <laughs> whatever. She said no. And I was like, well, that's not okay with me. Not even slightly. Uh, so I continued to pursue her. Uh, and then coming up the next semester in August, we ran into each other. I was like, you still have the opportunity to go out with me. And she said no again. So I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, this girl is going to drive me insane. And because I didn't get her, I felt like I really needed her. Mm. And, you know what I mean? Like, does anybody else feel like that? I just, I really wanted, I wanted, because she said no, I wanted her more. The conqueror. Um, <laughs> so girls, if you're watching this. It's okay to say no, but you have to say yes at some point. Because <laughs> after the third time of me asking her, she actually did say yes. And we dated for, oh, fives? Five, five. Something like that. It's five months, maybe. I hope she's not watching this because then she's going to be mad that I don't know that. <laughs> it's just so funny. I, the reason why I like, brought that up is because, like I said, like ESTPs, they usually present themselves in a very confident manner. Like, they just have this, like, air to them. It's because of that SE. Like... It's not only their SE, but their second function as well, which is actually TI, introverted thinking. Concerned with understanding how things work and accuracy. Takes in a plethora of information and extracts biases and emotions as much as possible to get the raw data and examine it. Loves to pick things apart to their simplest forms to fully grasp the mechanics of an idea, principle, or object in the most objective manner and be capable of applying that information elsewhere whilst continuing to keep the other information stored pure and consistent. Getting pure, cold, and detached. After stating all of that, um, the ESTP's most common catchphrase is, I don't care. And already, Rashad has said that quite a few times. And I know several other ESTPs who often just say, eh, yeah, I don't care, I don't care. And it's that I don't care type of attitude that not only usually attracts woman to them for whatever crazy reason it works <laughs> but on top of that um it it's what makes them have that confidence which may be why women are attracted to them because it, like i don't really care and they just they just hop into it so all the girls like confidence. a bad boy yeah all the girls like a bad boy i've noticed trust <laughs> me usually when you see the boy that seems like really really sweet and you know all of that and like athletic and everything really cool popular and then he just plays the mess out of the girl. It's usually an ESTP, which is, it's sad, but you know, that's kind of how- We don't all do that. We don't all do that. They don't all do that. We, we try our best not to play. <laughs> it's an accident if it happens, all right? Because I feel like I've done that before, and I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, but um, I, try, I try not to. I'm actually a really nice person. Like Yeah, you are. You are. In general. Yeah. I can appear to be an idiot or a moron, <laughs> or whatever your little heart wants to call me. You go ahead and do whatever you need to do to get you through the day. You don't care. I don't care. <laughs> we don't all play. We don't all play. I just want to point that out. Mm. I didn't want to get in trouble. You know. Yeah, and I was going to clarify that. Not every ESTP is a player. You are a Christian. You are saved. I am. Um, and so that's good. You know, praise Jesus for that. We, I know ESTPs who are married and great husbands. Um, I even think of... Um, the ESCP shoot, what's that guy? Stephen Furtick. He's a great pastor. Um, he's also an ESTP, and he seems to be a really great husband. So, yes, there is hope for ESTPs out there. <laughs> Rashad is a living example. ESTPs have a reputation for like being like promiscuous and like due to their SE, like intellect, sensual stuff, like you know, like stuff like that. Like, have you had? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm, that's fine. I, we can talk about that. Um, obviously, with just like that kind of stuff, I had, I, I've had trouble with it in the past. Uh, but thanks to the grace of God, that I'm not, I'm not <laughs> in that anymore. Uh, just like for, through high school and going through like 
what everybody was like. And I, I don't know if this has anything to do with the way this kind of works and the way this is, but I wanted to be the man mm. in that in that school, that especially in high school. And I learned, I kind of grew out of it um, when I started to get more mature and stuff like that. But I wanted to be the man in high school. I wanted to be it. I wanted to be the guy that everybody wanted to be. Mm. And I was. I played hockey uh, for one of the best hockey teams um, in our area, uh, very high level hockey, high school, which is the highest level. It's like, so I'm Canadian, mm. if you guys didn't remember that. <laughs> um, so take your American football or hockey, Canada, it's the same thing. So like all those guys that you went to high school with that played football and they were good, that's who I was except we played hockey. So. Wow. Um, and I played hockey there uh, for a few years. Um, and that was like great and then I became student body president of our school I joined all the clubs that made me popular um, it was it was good it was good and I and I really enjoyed it um, but that stuff also got me into trouble with uh, being promiscuous and stuff like that because everybody else was doing it and I felt almost left out mm. I felt like I wanted to be a part of it and because I wanted to be a part of it I got in trouble uh, with that stuff uh, thank God that I'm not there anymore because that would be absolutely horrible considering the fact that I'm going to be a youth pastor in about oh two months. <laughs> um, that is an issue that I went through as as a high school kid and uh, even some in middle school. Uh, it just was something that I I needed to go through and I needed God's help to get over that. And it, it took some time. Like I didn't just happen right away. It didn't just like go away and fade off. Um, it took a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of prayer. Um, but it is possible not to do that kind of thing. Uh, I just feel like in the world that we are right now, that is such a thing that everybody does everywhere all the time. Yeah. Um, rather if it has like anything to do with like porn or sex or anything like that, that is just such a, such a selling point. Uh, and for me, it was a selling point. Like I gotta be, I gotta be hundred percent honest. Like I wanted that. I wanted it badly. Um, but thank God that I didn't get involved, uh, too heavily. Uh, with a girl or anything like that when I was going through those stages because I would have definitely made a mistake. Yeah. Um, and as the kind of guy that I am, if I had made a, mis- had made a mistake back then, I would have been upset about it and it would have bothered me. Like, it's just the, my kind of personality. It so you would care it, in that case. I would have cared about that, yes. That is a <laughs> really big deal. <laughs> yeah, that is just a really wanted big, to make that, <laughs> that is. Sometimes they do care. That is a, that is a really big deal. Um, mm. And especially just like as a guy and having a lot of friends who aren't saved, which is, uh, that's their choice. But for having a guy with, like when I go home, it's not like it is here. It's mm-hmm. like here you're surrounded with a bunch of Christians and all that stuff. When I go home, I'm not surrounded by a bunch of Christians. I'm more or less surrounded by non-Christians than anything else. Mm-hmm. And I see what that stuff does to those people. And like they love it for a little while but then it starts to become an addiction or anything like that and they get some they struggle with that um so thank god that that's not a part of my life anymore um but it is something that definitely and i went through like Mm -hmm. and i had to i had to work my way out of it um and it took a lot of effort and prayer and a lot of help uh because it's not something that was very easy for me i feel you usually estps are known for like that because like I said the sensation like extroverted sensing dominant function so they want to jump into action they're really good with their body so they're usually like uh, to be candid very skilled in sexual activity and stuff like that generally speaking according to stats or whatever Um, but on top of that um, ESTPs are like you said before like they they're able to be like very uh, they're good at finessing they're good at charm and all of that and then I guess like the thing that really makes it like quick is their TI, which we're speaking about right now, which allows them to be cold and detached. Um, so TI, just like every other function, has a lot of like different faces, and one of the faces to it is that cold detachment. Um, and do you find it easy to pretty much like keep your feelings out of several things, or, like just cut off feelings like whenever you want um, to? Or? It depends on a lot of things. Yes is the easy answer for that one. Mm. Um, are there certain things that I'm like, no, okay, I do have like still feelings that are still stuck, um, rather on a girl or whatever, but I, um, I do find it easy to cut relationships 
uh, like easily. Like for example, like when I leave school, I have all my friends that are leaving because we're all graduating at the same time. But for me, for some people, it's like a big emotional scene. I'm like, well, it was cool when it lasted. <laughs> like it's not that big a deal. I know other ESTPs who literally are the, say the same. Thing. Yeah, like so it's, it's funny. <laughs> like it's not. It's not like it's. It's not like I'm not hurt that you're leaving me, mm-hmm. but I don't. I'm not about like gonna sit here and cry over it because Fine. that's not. It's just not who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not what I. What I. Well, it's not. I don't have that feeling um, <laughs> that I need to just overwhelm and break down in somebody's arms because you're leaving me for the rest of your life. Right. <laughs> Which obviously, like, I'll probably see some of these guys, and I'll probably won't see some of them. Like, but that's not. This is a phase of my life, really. Yeah. And like I said, when we go way back to that SE thing, like being present, I think that has a huge deal with like that kind of stuff, mm. um, and not worrying about like, well, I'm never gonna like right now. We're just hanging out. You know what I mean? And tomorrow, if we're not hanging out, tomorrow we're not hanging out. So I don't find feelings per se. I don't find them as hard to get rid of. Yeah, that's um, definitely where we're we're different. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely where we're different then, um, which makes sense because my TIs last, so detaching is like hard for me. I'm either like really, really deep in, yeah. or I just can't even like really be involved. Right, and I still, I still get, I still get deep in. Like, I'm, right. like if I'm in a relationship or like even whatever, like I'm, I'm in and I'm all in. Like you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and I'll, but I don't find it as like I know my friends, some of my friends who just like they're. They break up with their girlfriend, or their girlfriend breaks up with them, and they just ball. I'm like, <laughs> look, you can be sad, but you don't have to cry this much over it. Like, yeah, I don't cry. That's, hey, that's, that's fine. That's that's good. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. No, no like, I'm, I'm they're going to like depression <laughs> over like nothing. And I'm like, look, it just means like that's not the one that God has for you. Yeah. Um, that's just something that you need to learn. And it's every step, every relationship that you go through is a step closer to the person that you're going to marry. Yeah. Um, and you have to think about it like that. Um, at, as my personality, I'm not great at thinking into the future. And so, <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> so, it's just like for me, once it's over, it's over. Yeah. Um, but it's not, I don't, my feelings... I can feel detached very quickly. Mm. Um, even like just go all the way back to like when I started school. Um, my mom just had like the worst time me leaving. I'm like, you just need to calm down. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, and it's just like the way it is. Like, I didn't have a problem leaving home, like at all. Like, I didn't shed one tear. I was excited because I was at school. Not that really my parents, am. not that my parents weren't there because I didn't. I, I was, ups, I guess I was sad that they weren't there, but I didn't, like, I didn't get upset over it. I was Same. like, this is just a chapter in my life, and I'm never going to live in my house again, so what is the point of being upset about it? And I don't know if that counts as detachment or not, but I, that's just, like, an example that I think is a pretty big deal. Like, just relationships aside, like, just that relationship with your parents, if you have a good relationship with your parents, which, thank God I do, hmm. like, have a great relationship with my mom and dad and my sister. Um, but it is that's just what it is like I didn't I wasn't hurt by me leaving Mm -hmm. like what my mom seemed like that one time got you got you so another element of TI is pretty much the ability to like look at things in a very systematic logical type of fashion you know like picking things apart Um, and this is usually attributed to NTPs like ENTPs and INTPs and the STPs are usually better with um, taking things apart, like, physically. Um, but at the same time, like, it can also, like, uh, bleed over oftentimes. Do you find, like, a relation to, like, like you can just easily have, like, a BS detector, if anything? Like, you can just, like, know? I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm mean, i pretty good at knowing if people are lying to me. Mm. Um, like, I, I do well with that. Uh, I'm not overwhelmed and trustworthy person, so uh, not 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 that I'm not trustworthy. I meant I don't trust people like mm. over the top. It takes a lot for you to get to know me. Mm. Um, and for those of you that do know me, shout out to you guys because you've been sticking with me for at least a couple years because it takes some time. Like I don't I don't open up uh, that much because I don't know if it's like a fear of getting like hurt by it because I really don't care if they know information about me. Mm. But just most people just want to talk to me mm. and they don't want me to. They just want me to be there so they have somebody to talk to. 
I don't know. I'm not, I give great advice, apparently. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they uh, they really like that's just like a big. I don't even remember what we were talking about. I <laughs> Do you find it easy to like um, pretty much detect like oh, when liars. people are like that even lying or like logical inconsistency? Yeah, like oftentimes. when people have like stupid dreams that they they think these are gonna happen. Like I'm gonna win the lotto. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> like. Play if you want, somebody has to win. <laughs> it's probably not gonna be you. I'm a dreamer, I really am. Mm. I love to dream big, but I dream within my skill set. Mm. Um, because I don't, I, that's what I do. I know what I'm good at, and I don't mean to be overconfident, because I don't want you guys to think I'm a terrible person. But you can if you want to, I don't care. <laughs> um, I really don't, like, there's a lot of people on Earth that just think I'm the worst person on Earth, and I really don't care what they think. Um, but I need to get like him. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm a dreamer, but I dream within my skill set. Uh, mm. I'm dreaming big for this youth program that I'm about to uh, not start. They have a youth, but no, about to build um, so they can continue to grow. But I am, I know what I can and cannot do. So I'm not setting high expectations for myself that I can't reach, um, that I see that some people do. And when they do that, it really ticks me off because I'm like, you're never going to get there. Wow. Like, just be, just be like a little, have a little common sense. Now, <laughs> especially like if I talk about this with somebody who is a really big dreamer and I really do care about and I really like have like some kind of sympathy for and they're really like big. Yeah, like you. Like, <laughs> for me, like if you dream really, really big, that's great. And I need somebody who makes me push my limits because I dream very, very big, but within my skill set and in my limits. I never have to, I have to push myself to get to those marks, but I never have to go outside my comfort zone because I know exactly what I'm good at. I know how to be good at it. I know what to do and I know how to get there. Wow. But I never, I always seem to stop at that point. Hmm. Um, so when I see other people do like get past that point where I know what their skill set is, because reading people, like I'm good at reading people. I can see people and I can go, okay, you're good at this, this, and this, which makes me a democratic leader mm -hmm. um, because I just put people in their place because I want them to do this, this, and this because I'm like, okay, you're good at this. Here you <laughs> go. Um, but that's just like kind of what I see people dream really big and I know what their skill set is uh, from having a conversation, 20-minute conversation. I could tell you what you're best at. Because I can see it, and I read people that way. I think it's just because of a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because I have a lot of like experience with people and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. then I see the people that are like, "Okay, you can't, you can't accomplish that." And I'm like, "You can't do that without this, 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 and this. And you need to get this, 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 and this, and this, or you're never going to make it to where you need to go." Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds terrible because I'm like shutting people down all the time. But the reason why I like giving advice to those people is because I can bring them back to earth. I can go, logically speaking, by yourself, you can do this. But with this person and this person, you can actually get to here. But then you have to need this person and this person or this kind of person to get to where you want to go. So I, that's kind of, I think that's kind of like why I like leading and I like doing that kind of stuff. is because I see people for what they are and I don't see people for what they dream that they could be. Wow. Um, because I think that is, that's some of the issues that even like in the world that we have, that people dream like they're gonna do this, this, and they're gonna do it by themselves, and they can't get there by themselves. Wow. And to me, that's just super stupid. Like you just, <laughs> if you need help, just ask for help. Uh, call me, I don't care, I'll be there. Like I'm there to help, I just not gonna help you fall apart. And then the people that dream really big, I watch them crash and burn, I'm like, you should have stayed within your skill set. <laughs> There's literally an ESTP video, which you probably be seeing the blurb come up right about now. Um, and it's like the ESTP in five minutes on YouTube. And there's, they, they say that the ESTP is the type to literally look at stuff and be like, that's not gonna work. And then when things don't work, it's like, I told you. And that's- Oh, I'm right 95% of the time. <laughs> I've asked any one of my friends, they're gonna tell you it's 90. I'm saying 95, so we're gonna settle on 93. <laughs> Um, but I'm right like a lot of the time. And TI has to do with accuracy. TI looks at things in a logical, objective manner. It pretty much says screw everybody's feelings, all of that. What is the raw data right in front of me? And then when you have SE on top of that, SE likes to work with what it's presented with. It likes to just hop into action and get things done, but it works with the things that are in the room as opposed to like maybe something like NE, where it's like, oh, I'm probably gonna need this, I'm probably gonna need that. And the SE user will probably come in and be like, well, you don't have those things, so let's work with what you have right here. 
Um, and that's pretty much what uh, Rashad is talking about. And it's very fascinating, um, two of the things that you said, which I guess will go into the next cognitive function, um, extroverted feeling, also known as FE and personality hacker, uh, they nicknamed it Harmony, that's actually my dominant function. Concerned with social dynamics, how we emotionally affect one another, and creating harmony by meeting people's needs. Intuitively knows the exact buttons to push in the exact order to get a desired emotional reaction from an individual or group. Extremely diplomatic, in tune with the other's feelings, and makes decisions based on what is best for the group, putting his or her own personal feelings in the back seat. Can appear over-friendly and spineless. So, like I just said, that's my first function, and that's Rashad's third function. And what makes that different is that Rashad would not be as skilled in using FE as I would, um, as I am, just like SE is, SE is my third function, so I wouldn't be as skilled in using it as you are, but it's still there to an extent. Um, so in the same sense with Rashad, FE is still there to an extent as well. And FE always comes with TI. The things that FE and TI have in common is that they always want people to be on the same page. So FE wants everybody to be on the same page when it comes to values and um, you know creating harmony and all of that. And then TI wants everybody to be on the same page when it comes to data and information and objective facts. And so that's how they'll create harmony. Rashad mentioned how you cannot do certain things without people. And this is where I believe the ESTP's FE comes into place. Um, without FE, pretty much, you would not be able to be a good leader. But it's because you have a good grip on that tertiary function. Um, they usually call it the 10-year-old function because it operates as a 10-year-old. Mm. Um, and so pretty much, just like you said, like, or just like how I just defined it, me as an ENFJ, I have it as my dominant function, so I'm very, you know, like in tune with other people's feelings. I actually do care, often more than I should care, <laughs> you know, and I have a hard time not caring. I have a hard time detaching and everything. But you have TI as a strength, and then you have FE like right below it. So you are able to extend enough care to be able to tell people the truth. And usually as an ESTP, like they're known as like straight shooters. So the TI, like if an ESTP doesn't have a good uh, handle on their FE and doesn't care about the other person's feelings, then they will, they'll fail intact because their TI wants to tell all of this truth, like you're not gonna make it, this, this, this isn't gonna work, or you suck as a person, whatever the case may be. <laughs> I would never tell anybody they suck as a person. <laughs> I've thought it a couple times. If they have a good grip on their FE, then they'll know how to like say it in a way that's not sugar-coated per se, but more in like a skillfully tactful manner Ooh. that'll allow the person to understand. I have a perfect example for this. Yes. Go All ahead. right. So I don't mean to jump in. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so uh, last year I was elected leader, uh, probably because of my hair. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, just because they just wanted me to be the leader, and that's fine. I don't care. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm just gonna keep talking. You go ahead and laugh all you want. They elected me leader, and one of my friend acquaintances um, <laughs> asked me asked me if they could do this. And in my heart, I'm like, oh, darling, you can't do it. Like you just can't do it. I I want you to be able, to, but you can't do it. <laughs> so. We had like a conversation. She pulled me aside and was like, okay, I'd really like to do this part of the project. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, is there any humanly possible way I can convince her to do a different part of the project? And how <laughs> important the other part of the project would be if she'd just do it. People are not going to change my mind um, because I've already made up my mind on what it's going to be. Uh, so that's just the way of life. Um, <laughs> It's rather my way or the highway almost, hmm. but it's not because I make it feel like it's your decision, but it's really not your <laughs> decision. Um, one of my best friends is like, man, you manipulate me big time, but we'll get to that in a second. I'll tell you that story <laughs> in just a second. Um, so he, so she was like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put you in charge of this, which means you get to oversee mm. this, but really she didn't have to do any of that. Uh, because I put somebody else in charge of that little section that she wanted to do. and But I just did it in a way that it didn't hurt anybody's feelings. But I I felt like all I wanted to be like was, no, 
should not do that because you suck at this. <laughs> and it's not that you suck, it's just that you're not as good as everybody else. <laughs> I can't exactly recall what it was, but let's just pretend like it was building the PowerPoint slides. I'm very particular on PowerPoint slides. I don't think they should be like long paragraphs on a slide. And I've watched the SDPs her, like simplicity. I've watched her put long paragraphs on a slide. And as the leader, I was like, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> Right? So I was like, and I think, actually, it might have actually been the PowerPoint slides. It really was. Don't quote me on that, but it very much could have been the PowerPoint slides because it's starting to vaguely come back to my memory. Mm. Um, but just like, just keep it as an example in case it's not. I don't want to lie to you people. So <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, I'd be like, no, nah, because I don't want paragraphs. I'm going to get this person because I know that they put like six or seven words on a point instead of like a whole definition. And to me, that's just like better. So mm. I just kind of like manipulated the situation a little bit. To put her in charge of something that makes it sound like she's in charge of that, but it's not really in charge of that. So that way nobody gets hurt. But in my heart, I'm like, you suck at this. You not. You can't do that. That's so funny because I could literally see myself doing that same thing. And this video isn't about the ENFJ. We already made a video interviewing the ENFJ. But um, we're often known as the manipulators. But I think that, <clears throat> I know. Wait, I think that you guys are just as capable of manipulation. Woo! I am not manipulative at all. I bet that you guys really are. If anything, because like people pay attention to people like Raymond Reddington, who's in the NFJ, and then Hans from Frozen, who like they can seem like very nice, but then before you know it, they had this like long-term plan to like 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 flip you. Uh -oh. um, but I, don't worry, I'm not gonna do that. To I don't you. think this you can. <laughs> Don't challenge me. <laughs> it's F E N T I. Like he saw the truth of the situation, and instead of just like being straightforward and cutting with it, he decided to use his F E to be like, hey, how about you do this? And F E wants everybody to like, F E is all about win win situations, meeting people's needs, stuff along those lines. And Rashad, thankfully, because you're a well developed ESTP, <laughs> <laughs> you were able to tap into that, and you're a really good Christian. So, yeah, yep, that's good. good. Amen. You're a devoted Christian. <laughs> so, you were able to tap into that and cater to her needs and be like, you know, kind and sensitive towards her right. and delegate that task yeah. appropriately um, without anybody getting hurt because you were still thinking about harmony um, all together where you wanted the best for the group, right? but you also didn't want to hurt her feelings as well. Yeah, but that's a skill I had to learn. Mm. Uh, yeah, because this is I, a third function. I was, oh man, oh, if you guys knew me back in the day, <laughs> oh my, I would just tell you that you suck and you're not going to do it. And there's a lot of ESTPs who are still like that. So if you're one of them, if you know one of them, you should send them this video and tell them that there's hope. And, and like you said, it was a third function of mine. So it did take a lot of work to get to that point because I always just want to be very, okay, I just want to like kind of pat you on the head and be like, darling, you can't do that. Um, <laughs> but I did learn over the course and with the communications classes, like I said, the, me being a communications major at Liberty, yeah, that helps I, it, did, it helped a lot to be, to help me get to where I need to go yeah. um, without like tearing people apart. Because in my head, it'd just be way easier to just to tear people apart <laughs> and just leave them back there. And then if they can't keep up, find somebody to replace them <laughs> but let's just say it like that just would be easier um, but I'm learning mm. granted I'm still not good at it because I feel like I could be a lot better um, but that is that it's funny because it's like these are like my, my functions and I do really and I'm just gonna be open and honest again mm. I had no idea what this thing was uh, before I before Denzel was like hey you gotta you gotta come do this video and I was like a video about what He's like, you just have to be yourself on camera. And I was like, that's fine. I can do that. I uh, basically can do that every single day. I'm pretty much myself all the time. That's good. Uh, <laughs> then he sent me the, like, the links to get me like prepped and stuff like that, uh, which you did a very good job of, by the way. Thank you. And I read it and I was like, oh, <laughs> they're talking about me. <laughs> that's so weird. I'm not like to the point where these guys are or anything like that or anything you see on YouTube. Don't ask me about it because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> um, but just like when I was watching it, they were like, yeah, people like struggle in like like their areas so like I was like really good when I was born at this SE thing but then I had to gradually learn the TI yeah, yeah. and then I had to learn again like the next step and learn again the next step um, but like they came 
it became harder and harder and harder, right? SE was really easy for me at first, and then I learned TI pretty quickly, but then I had to like really learn the FE because I was like really bad at it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it does come in stages, and I think those four functions, you have to learn them, but they're traits of your personality. Yeah, so, yeah, and usually, as you grow, then naturally, like you, 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 de you um, develop these functions already. Um, but then, in knowing the, about these functions, like in advance, and pretty much that's what I do as a life coach. That's why I have this channel and everything. And knowing this, pretty much me as an ENFJ, I know that by the time that I'm like 60 years old, then I'll have really well developed NI and um, TI and SE and all of that. But I don't want to wait until I'm 60 years old before I'm my best version of myself. I want to speed up that process so that I can maximize my life. And so in knowing about all of this stuff, then you're able to kind of like speed up that growth and then put in more content and more um, display, like more, uh, more uh, shoot. There's a word for it, but it's not really coming to mind, so we're just gonna skip over it. Substance, that's the word, it just came <laughs> You probably relate, but usually we just talk until- Until it comes out. Yeah, that's You just keep talking until a word that you were thinking of about 10 seconds ago is about to pop out of your head. Yeah. I do that all the time. Yeah, Literally you're a every preacher, day. right? Yeah, I touch it. preacher thing. I speak in front of people all the time, and I go, oh man, what is that word? What is that word? What is that word? And I'll be like talking out loud, but in my head I'm thinking, man, what was that word? What yep. was that word? I'll go, the word is whatever the word was. Like, for example, I don't know why I keep getting you stories, but I love no, telling stories. Um, for <laughs> this, example, this interview is all about you. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> um, and it should be. Anyway, I was speaking to you like maybe a month ago or something like that, mm -hmm. and I was looking for the word repentance, and I was struggling to find the word. I was like, what is that word? What is that word? And I had gone off the chapter that I was talking about and just rambling. I don't even remember what the ramble was about until I looked <laughs> down at my notes and saw that word repentance, which is like a really key word in any gospel at all. If you, right. if you, if you're a Christian at all, repentance is I really needed to say that word. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna skip it, and I was like, no, nah, can't do that because it's a really important word. Uh, but I was like looking for repentance and looking for repentance and looking for, and I, and I started just rambling about something. And then eventually, it just kind of like all flowed back and like mm -hmm. repentance came out of my mouth. I was like, oh man, that was the That's word. The word. <laughs> that happens to me in my spontaneous speaking videos, which you'll see like all the time because I don't edit those videos. So you'll just see me like talking and talking. I'm like, shoot, what's that word? There it is. And then it just comes out. But oftentimes, I just try to like skip over it to, you know, pretty much like speed up time and everything. But yeah, essentially, uh, like we were saying, FE, um, Rashad, you definitely have a good grip on that because like you said, you... I think that's that's what we were talking about how that's what makes ESTPs usually really good leader. So um, Tommy, I believe, was his name, the Red Ranger's name. No, nah, he's the White Ranger. The Red Ranger's name was Jason. Now Jason, Tommy, Jason, Jason, Tommy Jason, took Jason. over for Jason. Right. In right. season two, episode six, I believe. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's 100% true. I might have just lied to you people. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jason. I remember that now. Jason was ironically he was my favorite. Um, uh, of all the Power Rangers. So once again, I really see huge similarities between the ENFJ and the ESTP and growing up. My favorite color is red and I usually tell people that my favorite color is red because of the Red Rangers. And it... <laughs> <laughs> I use, yeah, I tell people that all the time and I'm like, yeah, and to me it symbolizes leadership because of the Red Ranger. <laughs> and this is due to FE. Um, FE likes to pretty much like involve itself with the crowd. FE likes to like think, okay, what is best for the group? What is the way to be able to like lead people and everything? And even though Jason wasn't an ENFJ like me, he was an ESTP like Rashad. Red Power Ranger. Um, yeah, he did a really good job with like assembling the group. If you guys have seen the Power Rangers movie that just recently came out, um, spoiler alert, <laughs> he assembled the group together <laughs> and he was. <laughs> <laughs> and he was put in charge of the group pretty much and if he didn't have FE then he wouldn't have been as good of a leader but even then that was something that he had to work on if he was an ENFJ then he probably would have done a much better job with leading like from the jump or like knowing like what was good um, for the group from the jump um, he made some he, mistakes yeah and he did yeah he, he did make a few mistakes but then you see him like grow and that's pretty much like the archetype of an ESTP like an ESTP who's becoming like very well developed is learning how to you know their truth that comes from the TI, um, but also know how to give it in a more tactful manner. 
um, rather than just like always being like, oh, I'm just a jerk, that's just how it is. You know, like we don't use personality types as an excuse to be a jerk to people. We use it to help um, understand other people and to grow effectively as a person. Red Ranger, I can't believe you want to be the Red Ranger. Yeah, I love the Red Ranger. I am the Red Ranger, you understand that, right? No, no problem. You can, okay. you can, you can be the Red Ranger. Uh, I'm tweeting. I'll, I'll be the black one. <laughs> So the last cognitive function of the ESTP is introverted intuition. Concerned with understanding patterns of people's minds and what is most probable to happen in the future. People who use this function have always been relatively detached from their own perspective just enough to the point where they have watched their mind form patterns and then have gotten good at seeing those patterns in other people's minds. Adept at predicting the future and behavior of others by going from many ideas to a singular idea that is most likely to occur. Can seem zen-like or wise or insane. So as an ESTP, this is once again Rashad's last function inside Ronic because when we were uh, kind of like briefing over the functions right before the video, then he said, yeah, the only one that I just don't really understand is that one. And I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's your inferior function. And I, like all of the other functions, once again, has a lot of different faces. Ironically, this is my uh, auxiliary function. So for me and Rashad, our auxiliary and our inferior switch. So TI is my last, NI is my second, and then for him, TI is his second, and NI is his last. I have videos on this if you guys wanna go check it out on a deeper level. Um, go check out my metacognition video, and you can go check out any other video talking about NJs, um, the perceiving function videos and everything. But it's essentially watching your mind form patterns. Um, you've had Dr. Beavers, right? Yeah. And do you remember when she talks about metacognition and everything, thinking about what you're thinking about? Yep. Do you ever do that? Nope. <laughs> and that's pretty much what it is. Wait, wait, like, time out, time out. <laughs> why would you think about what you're already thinking about? See, and that's why he's an SE dominant. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what an SE dominant would say. The reason why you would think about what you're already thinking about is because you want to know why you were thinking about what you well, were thinking about. That just sounds the most dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> but then that's, that's helping you read people. No, and like also, it. and it's also helping you understand when you're able to understand what you're thinking about and see those thought patterns, and you're able to predict the future, which you're not concerned with doing. So that's why NI is last. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't care about the future. Exactly. Pretty much. So what's the point of thinking about it if I don't care about it? You know, I guess this is what we're about to discuss. SE and NI always come together. SE pretty much gathers all of the information that's around and everything, and then it uses NI to pretty much like read deep into it. When you have an INFJ, for example, um, who has NI as a dominant function, and then SE as an inferior function, it's kind of the opposite. They aren't really in tune with what's going on around them. They don't really see whatever, like whatever's like going on around them. They're like so much in their like heads, pretty much. And they, they have like, they're reading deep into everything. They don't see things like face value. I'm an ENFJ and I'm pretty much very, very, very similar in that aspect. Only because SE is tertiary, then I have a more realistic view of the world than the INFJ might um, because I'm more into my SE. But then him being an SE dominant, they just see the world like completely for what it is and they do not read deep into it. Um, they're not really concerned with understanding like the patterns of people's minds as much or predicting the future and all that because they're so in tune with the present moment. And this helps a lot when it comes to like sports and stuff where you don't have time to think, okay, if I catch this ball and I do this and I do that, then blah, 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 blah. You don't have time for stuff like that in sports. You have to like just catch the ball and you have to go. Um, so an INFJ would probably be stuck over there. But then when it comes to things like maybe like chess, Chess. Ooh, I something. suck at chess. There you go. You know, then because now you have to actually predict what the uh, person's going to do, what move that person's going to make, and then you have to predict what your move is going to be. And so you have to literally be like about three steps ahead, and that's predicting the future because you're able to pa like pattern predict your mind, and in predicting your own mind, then you're able to predict what other people are thinking. And then it's also understanding like symbols and pretty much things along those lines. Rashad is not as skilled in that, but it still comes with everything because you use a lot of symbols um, in your speech. And once again, I see similarities between that and the ENFJ. You guys know me on my uh, channel and everything. Whenever I'm teaching, then I like to use like a lot of metaphors and everything. I like to make things really like stick. 
And one time you were talking to me, because you're a youth pastor, mm -hmm. um, about how you usually teach your youth, and you said that you use something like uh, iPhone apps, for example, yeah. and stuff like that. Symbols. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, basically, I'm very on what's going on right now, like you said. And what's right now is an iPhone. Every kid seems to have an iPhone or a cell phone or stuff like that. And what I did one time, and what I'm planning to do again over the summer uh, for a different church, is I took, we all have an iPhone, we all use a calling app, we all text, we all use Snapchat, and we all, like, whatever, weather and all that stuff. Uh, just because it's so convenient and it's right at the tip of our fingers. Well, I use it, I use that as um, like a, a symbol for their relationship with God. So I use the phone app as calling on Jesus. Um, and that was like just the opening. Everybody uses a phone app, even if you don't have an iPhone, which you should get an iPhone, by the way. Um, but because uh, everybody else has it and you're just left out. And nobody on an iPhone likes the green the messages. Green messages. Um, but yeah, that's a great. side note. <laughs> At the time I did the messages, Snapchat had like the three best friends. Mm -hmm. And I asked I asked a question, who's your three best friends on Snapchat? And then I'd have like answers of, oh, my best friend or my girlfriend or my boyfriend or whatever. And I'm like, well, then why are you pushing that to be your number one best friend? And that's what's controlling your heart. Um, so I use, I use that kind of stuff. And I try to use things that are relevant. Um, I also use something like uh, KitKat. The Kit Kat slogan, taking a break. Mm -hmm. um, I just like stuff that they see every single day that gives them a quick reminder of Jesus because I feel like the one thing that we struggle with, especially as college kids and teenagers, is the fact that we. Okay, so like for those of you that are Christians, we read our Bible in the morning or at night, but of the rest of the day, we never, never crosses our mind. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that's such like such a conviction for me because I feel like I've always been. Okay, I did it. It's a check mark. It's done. I'm going to put it in the back burner until tomorrow. Uh, and then I have to read my Bible again. Or I have to pray again or whatever. Or right before I eat, like, pray before I eat. And then, oh, I can eat. Like, I don't have to think about everything else that's going on. And I don't have to think about it throughout the day. And I found that, like, a really big struggle in my life. So what I did was I took symbols and things that they see every single day, like like apps on your phone. So when you look at them, almost like it's a reminder that this is... Um, no, it doesn't, doesn't just represent you calling somebody else, but it represents you, excuse me, calling on Jesus. Or it doesn't just, these are my three best friends in this world, but is Jesus my number one best friend ever? Wow. Like, just stuff, stuff like that. And I use the weather about how you never know what's going to happen, and even weathermen don't know, tw they only know weather 24 hours in advance. They just lie to you the rest <laughs> of the time. Um, and yeah, I guess detector. <laughs> I use the weather as this is what our best guess is for the future, but we have no idea because only the one person who created us gave gives us the future and gives us, and understands where our future is going and all that stuff. And I cover all that because I feel like if you see it and you do remember those symbols that you see every single day, mm -hmm. um, that it really does like bring you back to what's really important. And I use that as a, like those symbols. I even used one time I used a chair. Um, because they sit on chairs during school every single day. And I use how if you only had three legs on that chair, you wouldn't be able to stand up. Um, because you'd have to like balance like this and you'd be stumbling, right? So why not have that fourth chair, right? And I use it as an example of there's the three, um, there's three sections of God. There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's your three sections. But without you following those three sections, you're standing by yourself. Wow. So there's all those kind of things that just quick representations and quick like understanding of what it's going to be and how it is um, just real world events that really represent God and that's something that I struggled with throughout high school and stuff like that and mm -hmm. I really didn't want my kids to struggle with it uh, during youth so I use stuff like that all the time um, and I'm working on a couple other things like keyboards and stuff like that things I see all the time just to Two representations. Yeah, that's good, man. For real. Um, pretty much the inferior function works very well with the dominant function um, because they always come together. So SE always comes with NI and then TI always comes with FE. You no, know, you'll see on lines like the inferior function is like, oh, like you suck at it. And usually you pretty much do. But then once you become like very well rounded, very well developed, then you actually have a very good um, like grip on your NI. So like 
uh, I would actually say that Rashad has a good grip on his NI because he's able to, you know, at least understand these things and use symbols um, to pretty much serve his SE for like everyday interactions and stuff like that. Now, whenever you see like a chair, especially like a three legged chair, then now you'll think of that. Or Kit Kat, like give me a break, you know, things along those lines, which is like very clever. But then he will never really have an I as strong as an NJ, like an INTJ, INFJ, ENFJ, or ENTJ, just like I would never really have um, TI um, as strong as a STP uh, or NTP. Um, like Rashad's. A personality hacker calls it the three-year-old function, where it's like the three-year-old can still speak and still has like, you know, like the ability to operate like in the family, still keep component of that family, but it's just pretty much like you don't want the three-year-old to drive the car and it's not even as strong or as developed as the 10-year-old, which is the tertiary function. So Rashad is much better with his FE than he is with his NI. But the three-year-old is still a human being. It's still a well-functioning human being. So you still have ability to grow your inferior function. And as you continue to grow older and everything, it's not technically maybe like a three-year-old anymore. It'll never be an adult, but it's still going to be like, you know, maturing, maybe now become like a five-year-old or something I don't know like th this is where like it gets like blurry when it comes to stuff like that that's introverted intuition at the core um, how it like comes about with ESTPs and like I said it keeps them in the moment it feeds their um, in the moment thinking so they can act on their feet like predict things like right away like what's gonna happen like right now yeah. like especially sports. like in sports yeah Absolutely. that's a big one yeah big one. yeah and i really helps when it comes to stuff like that but then when it comes to like really really long term type of stuff like timelines and all of that or like reading really deep into things that's not really where their superpower is more of their superpower is looking at what how things are and being in the moment and taking cease and jumping into that moment because if you have an ni dominant they never just jump into stuff and you need those type of people who are like wait let me process this for about a hundred years before we jump in and then we need those people <laughs> who are like hey let me not process this at all let me just jump in and you need both that NI and that SE to like help you so that like me as an ENFJ, my NI and SE are right above each other. So I'm more inclined to like process and think and let my planning like load, but then I allow my intuition to guide me like the rest of the 20% or 30% of the way with my SE. So like if anything like comes up, then I like pretty much get a little Rashad out of me and um, like, improvise or you know like maneuver appropriately while an INFJ or INTJ is not really as good with improvising so they have to like plan like full ahead and then Rashad or other SPs they're really good at like you know just like jumping in and then maneuvering throughout their way but it's because that NI like feeds in a little bit so they're able to like think more like quickly on their feet in that sense and that's just where their skill is. That is the four functions of the ESTP. This is Rashad and thanks you guys for watching. Do you have any last words? Any promotions that you may have? Um, tips for ESTPs out there? Oh, I give you a tip. I love giving tips. <laughs> oh, good. Tips for ESTPs. If you're like me at all, uh, you should learn about this kind of thing because you really do, like, believe it or not, you can get stuck. I found, like, the people get stuck on these, like, certain levels and you don't really realize it, that you need all four of these to actually, like, function as a human. Mm. Um, so, just, like, quick tip. If you are, like, anything like me and you're an overconfident, crazy person <laughs> um, and everybody thinks that you're the worst human on Earth... Um, I think that you're an awesome human. Oh, well, thanks. So, <laughs> other than one person, um, <laughs> you... Like, this is, like, important, and I, even just doing the video, like, I learned a bunch, because I prepped, but I didn't, like, over-prep, because it wasn't happening. Um, so, <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Um, and I do that all the time. So, but, like, that kind of stuff is really, like, it's a really big deal, and it helps you in not, like, relationships, not with, like, a girl or a guy or whatever, but, like, even with your parents or your friends and stuff like that, and it, it helps, because then, if they know you, and you know them... You don't, you don't seem to have to talk about what you're feeling like all the time. Exactly. Um, which is, which is cool. I mean, whatever. I don't care. Um, <laughs> don't be scared of it, because I was scared of it at first. When he's like, "You're doing this," and he's like, looking at me funny. He's like, "I'm studying you," and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> why are you studying me? Uh, don't look at me like that." And then I didn't do that. Yeah, whatever. Um, and then 
I'm telling the story right now, and he'd be like, I'm tweeting this right now. I'm like, what, okay, that's- what are you talking about? <laughs> You're tweeting? Like, if I had Twitter, which I don't, so you can't follow me on Twitter, but you can't follow me on Instagram. I don't care to tell people that I'm going to the bathroom um, four times a day. I don't do that. Well, some people do. Yes, yeah, it, it annoys I was me. I don't do it for you guys. <laughs> so I don't have Twitter. I uh, apologize for those of you that wanted to follow me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You can't. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram and see his awesome hair. He cut I, it since last semester. But I do. That's <laughs> my number one quality about me is that I have great hair. Um, Molly. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I still think that. Still don't think that's true. <laughs> I didn't work for Moana. I'm not helping Moana. <laughs> she does whatever. Anyway, I do have great hair. Uh, that's basically me. Uh, hair, sports, and confidence. Get and you through life. And oh yeah, okay. That made me feel like a terrible person. No, we, uh, we no, no. I feel bad no. as like a youth pastor. I probably should have mentioned God as that. God is number one. Then hair. That's it. Then hair. God's number one, then hair. Then confidence. Yeah. Um, for those guys out there that need to find a girl, um, God first. God first. Then hair. Then hair. And then care about the girl. Then care about the girl. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, be sure to follow Rashad on Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever else that you may have. We'll put all of his stuff in the description, so be sure to check that out. And leave comments and questions um, for Rashad. Um, I told him to be checking back every now and then to uh, answer them. We'll only answer uh, questions if we get 10,000 likes. Yeah, so be sure to get this 10,000 <laughs> likes, 10,000 views. You know, Rashad said that he's very pressed about that, and he's a conqueror, so that's what he's going to make sure that make happen. <laughs> but yeah, thanks again for watching, everyone, and done.